Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel, everybody. Lanny, Bert, the Dividend Diplomats, everybody, get ready, get excited, get hyped up, because we are going to evaluate a dividend aristocrat in this video to see if it is an undervalued dividend stock to buy. But before we do, make sure everybody smashes that subscribe button. Give Bertha Hurt and Lanny a nice thumbs up. It'll really make our Christmas that much sweeter, that much better. But you know what's even better than watching Bert and Lanny talk about dividend stocks? Talking about nothing. Dude. Oh. Channel. I see what you did there, Lanny. I see what you did there. But a nice dividend stock battle here. Again, guys, this is December 21st. So that's when the stock prices are as of. The S&P 500 took a big dump on Monday, only to come up out of the toilet seat on Tuesday. That's absolutely right, Lanny. That's a, that's a great way to put it right there. Yeah, the S&P 500, as we all know, after it's followed the same pattern over the last few months, we cannot just get a sustained decreasing period for, an ex for a week or so. We are craving those five plus days of decrease so we can continuously invest our capital in buying those undervalued stocks. Unfortunately, on today, today, the day we're recording, the 21st, the stock market rebounded after a couple down days, and it looks like it's trending right back upwards there. Still, though, we're always going to be looking for that undervalued dividend stock to buy. You know, we do. We always look at three dividend stock metrics to find these undervalued dividend stocks, and that's one, the price to earnings ratio, two, the dividend payout ratio preferably below 60%, and then that perfect sweet spot of 40 to 60%. Three, dividend growth. We want to see the record of consistent increases to your dividend as well as at what rate. Bonus metrics, the dividend yield. But Bert, we're dividend investors. And why is dividend investing the best path to take for passive income, baby? Well, you said it right there yourself. It is truly passive income. What we look for is we look for those companies that have increased their dividend over a long period of time through good times and bads, through the best economic cycles and through the worst economic cycles. It shows that these companies have a truly long-term mindset, which matches our investment horizon, which is forever. And our goal with financial freedom is to build that growing income stream. So we want to see a, a dividend and an income stream that grows over time. That is why dividend investing is the best. So, Bert, we're talking about two massive companies in the possibly healthcare industry. Now, what two stocks are we here to talk about, B? I know, Andy, we are pumped up. The healthcare sector, what's going to be interesting about these companies, you can find them at nearly every corner, every major intersection that you go to, because these two companies are I have cornered those beautiful parcels at the end and there you know them you are, you, know. are you trying to say are you trying to say that they cornered the market uh oh that's exactly what i'm trying to say there and places like real reads like realty income love these companies because they take up a lot of those leases everybody get excited get hyped up the two companies we are going to feature in this video are walgreens booth alliance ticker symbol w b a and lanny Who's the other company that we're going to be talking about here? Talking about CVS, ticker symbol CVS. Now, the funny part about this, obviously, is we've done these battles before, but CVS just had a very fun news release a few weeks ago that we'll talk about. And then on top of it, another company, Walgreens Boots Alliance, ticker symbol WBA, their stock price has really plummeted again underneath $50 per share. And then with all the talks of Omicron, the COVID-19 new variant that is spreading literally like wildfire, I had a nice little booster shot experience at Walgreens that I really wanted to talk about as well. So we're like, heck, let's do it. Let's look at the metrics. Let's see if these are two undervalued dividend stocks to buy. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And what's interesting here with these two companies, they have played such a major role in the COVID pandemic. Yeah, the last part. So yeah I've gotten... I've gotten my vaccine and my booster at CVS both times, different locations. But I know, Landy, yeah, you've had some experiences as you've gone through it too with the pharmacies for better or worse. 
but how many people have gone picked up their prescription? They've gotten their flu shots. They've gotten their medications. They picked up a few extra items along the way while they're waiting for everything. I usually pick up some random items. Like they have a really fun coupon program. I pick up my toothpaste and toilet paper there a lot. Um, representing Walgreens. I did get my initial vaccine at Walgreens. I attempted, I'm just going to get into it. I attempted to get my booster shot and, um, you know, I was canceled just shortly before going into the Walgreens uh, due to limited staff. And then there's no availability to get a booster shot now for at the surrounding locations by me, probably for another three to five weeks. Yeah, it's crazy what we're going through here, especially in Cleveland at the moment where there's a little bit of a hotbed for COVID. So it's insane. Uh, every COVID. And what must be because the Browns lost. Yeah, tell me about it. That I mean, that's also tied into this story. But we're not here just to talk about that. We're not here to talk about our experiences with the two places here. We are talking about these companies because they are in that healthcare sector, because they are the two major players in the drugstore business, and because they've always have been interesting with their acquisitions with Walgreens Booth Alliance merging in the early 2010s. And then you have CVS and Aetna merging in the mid to late 2010s. So both companies are kind of transforming to try and take advantage of some of the new health pieces. And the interesting piece is what Walgreens is getting ready to shed boots just a few years later. That's what I saw. I saw some articles there, how they're looking to potentially sell it off to private they're equity. Pulling, they're pulling an at and move there. Yeah, no kidding. The old merger and then spin it off a little bit later. Hey, looks like Walgreens is getting in on this spinoff game as well. Hey, there's another one. But Bert, let's get into this. This is the stock prices as of December 21st. Let's start it off with Walgreens. Bert, what's that price to earnings look like for WBA? All right. Remember, everybody, prices are as of December 21st, 2021. Price for Walgreens. $49.96. It's incredible to see Walgreens closing below $50 a share once again. For EPS is $5.11. That gives you a PE ratio of 9.78. Very low. We'll have to compare it to CVS, which Bert, I'm just going to segue into CVS. CVS is trading at $100.79 with a forward EPS of $8.26. PE ratio is at 12, higher than Walgreens. Yep, both are well below the broader market, which is between 25 and 30x. Moving into that second metric here, Walgreens annual dividend is one dollar and ninety-one cents. You divide that by the five eleven four earnings, that gives you a payout ratio of thirty-seven point three eight percent. So just below a perfect payout ratio range. Obviously, a big check mark as it is overall below sixty percent. Similarly. CVS, you know, now pays two dollars and twenty cents per year, spread over four quarters, or fifty-five cents a quarter. Their payout ratio is lower than Walgreens, a twenty-six point six three percent dividend payout ratio for CVS. Both great, but you know what? Both have plenty of room to keep growing that dividend going forward. It'd be great to see them just start keep crushing the increases going forward for the next decade or so. That's what we want to see. Third metric here, Walgreens. Dividend aristocrat. They've increased their dividend for 45 plus consecutive years. Their five-year average dividend growth rate is 5.18%. How does that compare to CVS, Lanny? Well, it's impressive though. I mean, again, 45 years, hard to beat that when CVS has one year. Not zero, but now a one. Now it's been a few years since the Aetna merger. And I predicted that you know, back in 19, I predicted that they were going to resume their increases in 20. Pandemic happened, which I think CVS was like, yes, yes, we can postpone an increase for another year. That's my, you know, if I'm executive management, that's what I'm thinking. And so yeah. then they brought yeah. back the dividend increases this fourth quarter, 2021, 10%. It was refreshing, at least CVS's management was very transparent about their strategy to not increase their dividend. As soon as the CVS Aetna merger happened, they said, we're going to maintain the dividend, but we're not going to increase it for the next few years and focus on paying down debt. We got past those few years, and here we are back to the dividend increasing. They're following through on their plan, and it's just refreshing to see the transparency from a management team. We're talking about you, AT&T. What we'll have to see is if CVS picks it, but keeps it going. If this was like a one in every three years, you know, we'll have to find out fourth quarter 22 if another dividend increase happens. But as we just saw from the payout ratio, there's plenty of yeah. 
So then let's move into that bonus metric here, the dividend yield. Walgreens dividend yield is currently 3.82%. How does that compare to Walgreens? I mean, how does that compare to CVS? My apologies. Wow. Well, I'll say, wow. You know, Walgreens pushing 4%. It's hard to beat again. CVS is at 2.18% right now. So almost only half of Walgreens. Yeah. And I mean, Walgreens payout ratio is 37%. CVS's payout ratio is 26%. So it does make sense that Walgreens dividend yield is higher compared to CVS. Obviously, Walgreens recent dividend increase was barely over 2%, which is below inflation right now in 2021, whereas CVS juiced it up 10%. So you're getting better growth rate right now from CVS. I missed the times last year where you'd say that 2.1% was uh, outpacing inflation at the moment there. That feels like it was forever ago. And unfortunately, that's just not the case right now, as we all know. Now, Bert, one thing I do want to point out is it looks like Walgreens stock performance, they're up about 20, 21% year to date. But CVS is just on fire at up 44% year to date. Yeah. No, they're crushing it. I mean, good news. They've just, their results have been crushing it. They announced a 10% dividend increase right there. Great news for CVS. A lot of positive momentum there. And it's not that Walgreens is bad. They, they're still not quite outpacing the S&P 500. But yeah, 20% growth isn't anything to sneeze at either here for Walgreens. But guys, this is what I also want to kind of reiterate on this video. This is why you play the long game as a dividend investor. I, I know, Bert, you had CVS. I was buying CVS a ton back when they were going through before the merger, during the merger, back, you know, gosh, scooping them up when they were in their very low stock price days um, during that standpoint. And, you know, it's paying off now. Yep. That's exactly right there, Lanny. And Walgreens has had the interesting effect. It's actually been in a slump for the last five years when you expand out via the stock price chart, it was in the 80s to 100s just over a little over five years ago, right around that time. And they're going through some growing pain. So yeah, maybe it makes sense to see a spinoff of their business to try and unlock value for shareholders in a different way. Now to summarize again, Walgreens stats, you have a less than 10 price to earnings for WBA. You have a payout ratio of below 40%. You have dividend growth streak of over 45 plus years, dividend aristocrat, almost a dividend king at an average rate of only, you know, around 5% growth rate, but the most recent was pretty low at 2%. Yield is pushing 4%. Uh, Bert, how does CVS look again? PE ratio of 12.2, payout ratio 26%. They've increased that dividend for one year, and that last increase was 10%, just announced recently. Their dividend yield is 2.18%, and as we talked about, they are crushing the earnings there. So both are interesting companies right now when you look at the metrics here. You know, it's funny. I own CVS in my portfolio. And then in my wife's portfolio, she has Walgreens. You know, I wouldn't mind giving Walgreens a little benefit of the doubt right now, maybe grabbing a share or two. Obviously, I like CVS's growth metrics, but, you know, I would say CVS probably, I, I don't know. They're, I think it's, I think the Edna is finally paying off. But yeah. what are, what's your take? No, I mean, it's interesting seeing both of them there. I think this shows why you always focus on the fundamentals because, if you were to take a step back and say, wow, CVS is up 44% year to date, or they're up 49% over the last 52 weeks, company must be overvalued. I'm not going to consider CVS. That's not the case here. CVS's metrics make an argument for why, even after such an increase, they are still showing signs of undervaluation based on that forward earnings projection. I'm not running to buy because I'm very happy with my CVS position. We have a pretty healthy position right now, especially after this run up. But yeah, to your point, Walgreens, it may not hurt to sprinkle in, maybe get five to 10 more shares over the next few weeks. Can't hurt. Yeah. yeah. Is this like a play where, hey, maybe they do spin off Boots Alliance, unlock more shareholder value two, three years down the road? Kind of like that long game that we play with CVS. I'm not sure. Obviously, I'm not an yeah. expert. No. But Bert, the question we have is for the viewers. Do you like CBS? Do you like Walgreens? Or are you passing on both? Which stock do you own? Which is a stock to buy right now? And obviously, everyone, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. Give us that thumbs up. Thank you for all your support. Everybody, let's keep crushing it. Let's build that momentum going into 2022. And let's make the year 2022 count and just keep pushing and growing that dividend income. There it is, guys. Finishing the 2020 year, 2021 year strong. That was Bertha Hurt and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomat over and out.